Professor Collins, we want to thank you very much for coming along and speaking to us uh, this weekend. And you've been involved in the sequencing of the human genome now over a period of many years. And this must raise a lot of ethical challenges for all of us now that we know uh, the sequence of our own DNA, our own genetic code. Could you tell us a little more about those bioethical challenges? It's actually hard to identify brand new dilemmas that have been posed by the Genome Project by re reading out all the letters of the human DNA code. But what the Genome Project has done is to accelerate the pace where some of those potential future dilemmas might now be much more close to us. So for instance, one of the great concerns that many people have, and it's been a big part of our ethical program, is discrimination on the basis of your DNA sequence. Many of us would like to find out what our risks are of future illness, especially if we could do something about it, but if that means you lose your job or you lose your health coverage, then you have been injured, and that is something that is violating principles of equity and justice. There are many other ethical issues which the Human Genome Project, by founding a program focused on this for the first time, trying to anticipate the results of a scientific revolution instead of just hoping for the best, uh, we have identified others that are now getting a lot of attention. Intellectual property. Is it proper to file patents on human DNA that we all have uh, within our own bodies? Doesn't seem quite right. And of course, if it's done improperly, it can slow down research instead of speeding it up. What kind of oversight should there be about genetic testing? Uh, is this the kind of information that the marketplace ought to simply run free? Or are there concerns there about is the testing accurate? Is the information useful? And then much more difficult problems about modifying human nature, human biology, enhancements as they're often called. Most of those scenarios are kind of science fiction. We can't really do them, but they worry people. The designer baby scenarios, which make good Hollywood movies. But I do think there's something there that we ought to be getting seriously into the idea about whether there are boundaries that we don't want to take our technology beyond. And then more philosophical questions. Does reading your own genome change your view of yourself? Will we slip into an attitude of determinism when we have such wonderful detail about that double helix? And will we therefore begin to think the environment matters less or even begin to downgrade our spiritual nature. For me as a believer, that would be one of my great concerns, that despite this wonderful revelation of information that God has given us the ability to discover, that we might use it in ways that actually misrepresent uh, the wonderful nature and nobility of the spiritual aspect of humanity. So you're actually, you're actually convinced then that we, we, we do really have free will, like, despite knowing the sequence of all DNA. Right? Free, free will is at no risk yeah. by the study right. of the human genome. Right, that's very reassuring. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Professor Collins, for coming along today and for being with us. Wonderful to be here.